I'm going to talk about um, some uh, things in your life. How many of you uh, like to be uh, less insecurity? You know, how many of you like less of uncertainty? How many of you like less of unrest and negative stuff happening in your life? And how many of you like less of anxiety over your life? I think we are all, uh, you know, want to step away from all these things. We don't want to be put in the spot. So we want stability, we want peace, we want to be walking confident, and we want to have a good hope. So that's the bit I want to talk about. Sometimes we can be drawn into these uh, the, the areas that we don't want to. Okay? So most of the time, our identity, our source of hope, is anchored in the worldly systems. So we measure things in the worldly system and we, uh, we undervalue our situation. Okay, let's see. The worldly system want to put our security and trust in money. Yeah. It's in everybody's life. There's a bit of money in the bank account. Uh, so for some of us, it's uh, as long as we've come out of overdraw, <laughs> overdrawn, <laughs> we are like, yes! Uh, you know, so some of us got big fat saving accounts. Uh, some of us has invested in uh, stocks and shares and they are doing well. Uh, but, so money uh, is a worldly security system that we trust. How about jobs? Jobs are a worldly security system. Uh, Pastor Ashimalovo. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing. He used to say, a job, J-O-B, just over broke. <laughs> uh, so, uh, how about we put our trust in our friends? You know, uh, you know we, we put uh, so much of trust in our friends. Friends are humans. How about some of us put our trust in our talents and ability? And some of us put our trust in our loved ones. They are also humans. <laughs> some of us put our trust in our intellect. Our knowledge. These are sort of worldly trust or securities that we that we think are real security. They can be all shaken. They can be all taken away. They can be all removed. We are in a time, we are in the time of last days. But it is nearly 2,000 years, last days. Not. But we are re really, really near than 2,000 years ago to the last day or last days of the coming of the, uh, our Lord. So... It is in our last days, uh, we, I shared um, in first, I think, December, about falling away is going to happen. The great falling away is going to happen in the last days. And there is a lot of deception is going to come. And part of this deception is 
putting our security and hope and trust in these worldly systems. Because we have taken value from our worldly system and the worldly system can fail. Amen. Let's uh, look at the godly system. Godly system can be never be taken away. This will never change and we can put our anchor in that. What I mean by that is his love never changes. It's constant. Nothing that you do, good or bad, is going to change that love. God's promises to you are not going to change. It's constant. It's for everybody. Either you can believe in the trust, uh, in the promises, or not believe. That is our problem. But... He, Promises don't change. They cannot be affected by any system. Amen? Good, good church. How about God's character? He cannot do something out of character. He's good. He's faithful. He is love, He is holy, and He cannot do anything evil to you. It's always good things for you. I mean, we know it in theory to do a Sunday school answer. Yeah, God is good. He is not going to do anything evil. When things happen, bad things happen. While... Well, uh, well, at the a and &E with my nephew, he's asking me a question. Why do bad things happen to good people? So I had to give him an explanation. It's nothing to do with God. God is not evil. He's never evil. It is out of character for him to be that way. He is love. He is love. He is love. Amen. He is faithful. He is righteous, so he cannot lie to us. This here is not a lie. The other day I was listening to another uh, faith, uh, what they represent in their book. And it says there in that book, you can lie. At, at certain situations, you can lie. And also it says that their God has lied. Our God here in the Bible doesn't lie. He is truth. So whatever written in this book is truth. Not a lie. Let's look at some Bible verses. Let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews 6.18. So God has given both his promise and oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence. Everybody say confidence. As we hold to the hope that lies before us, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through a certain 
certain into God's inner sanctuary, curtain, inner sanctuary. This trust can lead us into his sanctuary. I mean, I can actually stop my sermon here and go because this is what I'm trying to say today. This passage, his promises, his oath for you and me. But most of the time, you don't want to take those promises. Or we saw somebody else. Thank God it is in the book that we trust. We can refer to our reference manual, our promise manual. We can go back and check it out. You listen to the worldly system, worldly news, worldly whatever, Facebook, <laughs> you know, Instagram, anything. They will tell you otherwise. Something different. I mean, we do spend a lot of time in the, on the social media. <laughs> that is not truth. It might be logically correct. We don't live by logic. <laughs> we live by faith. Faith in God's word. Thank you, Lord. So, these two things are unchangeable. The promise and the oath. God does not lie. We can have great confidence in this. And this gives us hope. Uh, uh, um, hope deferred makes a heart sick. You put the trust in something worldly which is going to fail, your hope will be deferred. You're going to be disappointed. The pastor is not going to help. <laughs> the, the worship leader is not going to help. The, I don't know, they are not going to help. Jesus is the only help. God is the only person that you can trust. We are all humans. He is godly. And his ways, his character, is, it doesn't waver like our, us. He, he doesn't go through the trials and tribulations that we go through to be a bit of, uh, let, let us be complacent. Let us uh, compromise. No, his word is final. It doesn't change. In these last days, when we, if you don't to take what is written here, something else is going to give you instruction. Some come from our good friends, some from social media, some the news, some I don't know. Our loved ones who are not saved. Yeah, there's a lot of self-help, you know. Let us uh, have a look at Psalm 1981. Oh, sorry, 11981. Psalm 119. says, I am worn out, waiting for your resource, rescue, sorry. I am worn out, waiting for your rescue, but I have put my trust in your word. David is saying, my trust is not anywhere else but in your word. Amen. What happens if you take... God's word as the ultimate authority and basis for your hope. Uh, 
Ephesians 4.14. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies. So clever, they sound like truth. They sound like truth. It sounds like logic. Sounds like, mm, yeah. Overcoming discouragement and disappointment and doubt. So there are three categories of things that cause us to lose hope. I mean, there might be more, but let's deal with three. One is problems that discourage us. Anyone having any problem? Amen. Yeah? This can discourage you. People that disappoint you. Anyone been disappointed by any people? They are people, please understand. They are people. They can disappoint you. But if your hope is in them, this disappointment gives us hopelessness. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Perception that's in your own mind that defeats you. It's a bit tricky to understand. I'll explain it to you. You have in your mind, with the information that you have got, have a preconceived idea. And when that is destroyed, you become hopeless. It is not written here, but it is written in your mind. We can also call it a fortress. You built this empire with that fortress. And when that breaks, falls down, your hope is destroyed. Amen? Good. I think at some point I need to land. Uh, so, so um, circumstances that overwhelm you as financially, relationally, mentally, physically, discouraging problems, we can all face, or we have already faced some of it. But if you, are, if you don't know to apply the Word of God, you're going to go into hopelessness. Disappointing people are people who let you down, and everybody in this room has <laughs> let, <laughs> been let down by somebody. This brings disappointment. This brings betrayal and, uh, you know, hurt. And Some people have, like, manipulated you and, uh, for their own agenda, for their own advantage. And when you find out, oh, this is what they are trying to do, you, you're hopeless. You become disappointed. Destroyed by perspective and truth, which is in your head. Sometimes we are very bad of to judge ourselves, meaning, hey, that thing that I did, is it correct? My wife calls it self-righteous. <laughs> because... We have formed something in our head and we think what we've done is right. If it's not aligning with the word of God, it is not correct. That's why you 
good to have a wife, good to have good friends, good to have, you know, uh, uh, spiritual friends uh, or family who can put you right at times when you oversee, if you, when you're not seeing those things. Is everyone with me? Amen. Please don't get off. We are not finished yet. Uh, James chapter 1, 1 to 6. A doubtful mind is an unsettled and as wave of, of the sea that is driven and tossed by wind. So when your hope is shaken, it's saying unsettled. And we become driven into the wrong direction and tossed by the wind. Whatever wind that we are catching, if it's not the Holy Spirit, if it's not the Word of God, the wind that we are catching is going to toss us. James 1, uh, yeah, sorry. It also says, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. God's holy word gives us a sort of an antidote. For this negative or hopelessness. Acts 17, 26 to 28 says, And he has made from one blood every nation of men who to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their appointed time and the boundaries of their dwelling so, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might uh, grope for Him and find Him. Though He is not far from each of us, for in Him we live and move and have our being. As also some of you, your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Three ways we can live with hope for the rest of our life. No matter what happens. One is we must anchor our identity to what God says about us. How many of you like to get your friend's perspective on things? How, how do I look? Am I looking good there? Uh, or... Your spouse or social media? Like, 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 share. We can get carried away. We must anchor our lives life's mission to God's purpose for us. Our life's mission should be anchored in God's mission. Everybody say God's mission. Are we all in it? And purpose for us. 
We must anchor our future to God's promises to us. Not what the politicians say. How many of you know the promises of politicians? And we trust and we vote them in. Thank God we are outside the political system. We are in a kingdom system which is governs all of us are spiritual beings. Not the systems of this world. So, not the promise of so and so or someone or system. But the promise of God, we anchor our future his, in His promises. If you don't know His promise, you can't anchor. Okay, let's quickly have a look at the first one, which is, you must anchor your identity to what God says about us. God says you are valuable. Everyone agree? I mean, I've got Bible reference, but um, because of time, I just want to finish. You are highly valuable. You know, value comes from whose you are. That like you take a, you know, whatever you find, uh, uh, antique or whatever, and it it, the value goes up when, it, when they find out whose this is. Okay, so you are valuable. God says you are valuable, each and every one. He didn't waste no time. He didn't make any samples. It was all original for a purpose, not a test drive. No, you are final product for a specific purpose. Amen? You are valuable. You are acceptable. You know, enemy comes to give you this guilt, the, uh, you know, guilty conscience, the accuser of the brethren. But the Lord says, you are accepted in me because of what Jesus did. You are chosen. Hey, we are not somebody. We are chosen. We are chosen into His kingdom, His family. This is a family. You've been chosen to come into this family. You are chosen. I don't know, when I used to be a little kid, you know, I used to wait for my turn, you know, 20 people will be there. Only 12 can play in, the, uh, in our team for cricket. And I'm waiting to be chosen. I'm praying to be chosen. I'm thinking, hope, hoping that, you know, they will put me in the team. It's not like that. You're already chosen. You're in the team. Team player. Not a pew warmer. <laughs> Amen. You are loved and you are lovable. Victoria, you are loved and you are lovable. Each and every one, I mean, first time I got saved, I got hit with the power of God of love. And that is overwhelming. You, I mean, you, one person cannot... Contain, it's just, you will burst into tears and overwhelm me. It's, that's how much love. You cannot contain His love. This love is so powerful that as soon as you receive Him, you want to share this love to, with other people. It's addicted to, you know, this love. He says, you are loved. Each and every one. 
If you're here, I want to say you are loved. And you are lovable. How many of you go into work and think, oh, I don't know if they love me. Hey, you are lovable. They might have a problem, but you are lovable. That's what God says. I mean, He says, I love you. Does anyone else matter? He's a creator that who created you. Not uh, the people that, you know, you think they might not love you. So God is saying you are lovable. Ephesians 1.4, if you want to go home and check that. Sorry, uh, Je- Jeremiah 31.3. And uh, you are forgiven. My biggest problem to come to Christ was I, don't, I didn't want to be a hypocrite. And I used to tell myself, one day I will walk holy. Until then, I will say I'm trying to be a Christian. But the word of God says you've been forgiven. It's a lie of the enemy. He has washed you clean, white as snow. There is no iniquity. There is no separation. There is nothing in you. You are forgiven. Some people think they need to be punished. Hey, ask the Lord to forgive you if you are messed up. We all do. He has forgiven you, your past, your present, and the future. Please remember to ask for forgiveness. So that it's washed away. We all mess up things. But you are forgiven. If you don't know that, you're going to fall into this trap. How many of you feel guilty? You know, you've done something. Just ask the Lord, forgive. Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up. You are forgiven. This is a good one. You are capable. I can't do that. I don't know whether I can do that. You are capable. You are capable. How many of you love uh, filling forms? I hate that. That's one of the worst jobs, especially also the accounting side of it. We did our accounts. Praise God. That was a tough one. Testing time. Do we have to pay this much? Anyway, God saved us. Anyway, filling a form is a, it's a hard task for me. And I would always like, you know, fight with Ruth saying, I can't fill the form. I can't. And then <laughs> she's so busy. So in the end, I would just say, Lord, please help me. I need, I need the form here filled regardless. You are capable of what the Lord is asking you, what is put in front of you to do. Anyone want Bible verse for that? 2 Corinthians 3, 5 to 6. You are worth dying for. Each and every one. You are worth dying for that has to be our anchor you are worth he has paid the highest price come on who on earth is going to do that you are worth dying for and you are unforgettable He's not going to create you and put you to be a, like a robot, you know, get up in the, ni- uh, in the morning, nine, uh, 7 a.m., get ready, go to work for 9, and like a robot. No. He's not going to forget. You are unforgettable. In fact, he has written your name on his palm.
you are unforgettable. He's having happy thoughts about you and I. Let me see what my daughter, my son is going to do today. Uh, I have lovely thoughts about them. I have good plans for them. Amen. The second one is, I must anchor my life mission to God's purpose for me. Acts 13, 36 says, For David, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw... So it says, For David, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God, he fell asleep. How many of you want this on your tombstone? You served this generation. And you fell. So, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God, according to his plans and purposes, he served. And then he fell asleep. Are we in that place? Or have you drifted away? If you have drifted away, you're not anchored. In God's uh, purpose and your life's mission. This can bring discouragement. Because you are putting some other mission. Acts 20, 24 says, I don't care about my own life. The most important thing is that I complete my mission. The work the Lord Jesus gave me to tell people of the good news about the grace. I want to complete my race. I want to finish the task which is given. Amen. Acts 1, 6 to 8. It says towards the end of the uh, 8. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. This is a job description for everybody. Not the pastor, not the evangelist, not the... A teacher, not, you know. Everybody's job description, mission. Go unto the world. I must anchor my future to God's promises to me. This is the third one. God's promises. I was, this is what I was typing last when I was called to the car. Come now, we are going to leave. Promises. No, and what I'm saying is I was the driver, but they all got into the car before me. Uh, so they threatened to leave me. But you know that there are 6,000 promises. Come on. Come on. 6,000 promises for you. You can take a handful of them and live with that. Okay, I managed to get one in. Acts 2, 25 to 27. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord... Always before my face, for he is my right hand, that I may not be shaken.
Therefore my heart rejoices and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. I will not leave you. I am with you. I am giving you the helper, the Holy Spirit. You are not alone. There is a number of promises. He wants to give you good health. He wants to give you good relationships. He wants to make sure there is a roof over your head, you are fed, you are provided for. And He's given you a family. Let's commit this time to the Lord. We all have gone and strayed watching the wrong stuff which is giving us the wrong information. We have lost hope at various times because our trust wasn't in God or His Word. You know, when hope is deferred, hope is taken away, you lose your focus. You lose your purpose in life. God has a purpose for your life. God has a direction for your life. Jesus, we surrender, Lord. We say, Lord, ignite that fire back in our soul, in our spirit, Lord. Give us hope in you. Take away the, all the stuff which is giving us wrong information. The enemies chattering in our ear. Our value system from drawn from different areas that are not of you, not based on the scriptures. In you, Lord, we are loved. That is more than enough. Because you created us to love us. You created us and you said, I love you. Lord, we want that love to settle in our hearts. Deep down to begin to anchor everything that we do in our life. Come Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, reveal this to us. The love of God. God says you are loved and you are lovable. I don't know whether you have put other people's word in front of that. You're going to be disappointed. But this God is faithful, He's true. And he says, I love you. And you are worth dying for. In fact, I have written you, your name on my hand so that I can see each time. You might have been drawn into the worldly system. But God says... I have a purpose for you. I have a mission for you. I have the kingdom for you.
you are a citizen of this kingdom i have given you authority over the enemy i have given you my power is been given to you to demonstrate to the powers of this world go out into the world preach the good news of the gospel lord put a burden in our heart put a fire within us this love is not containable inside of us it has to be shared it has to be said out it we have to be a witness a witness saying what happened to me what happened to us what happened this love of god which captivated us thank you lord thank you holy spirit have your way in this place